This use update is brought to you by. Good morning and welcome to the Barbados Today News Update for Monday, November 2nd. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. One man is in stable but critical condition at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and another one is dead following a shooting incident in St. Michael yesterday. The man whose name is being withheld by police was injured in an incident at Clark's Gap in Spooners Hill that claimed the life of 25-year-old Jermaine Williams of Waterhall Land in Eagle Hall. The incident, which occurred around 15 minutes past 5, also resulted in property being damaged. Police investigations are continuing. St. Philip residents came out in their numbers over the weekend for a candlelight vigil in memory of four young ladies who lost their lives in last Sunday's car accident on Two Mile Hill, St. Michael. Heading the procession were St. Philip MP for St. Philip North, Michael Lashley, and St. Philip South MP, Adriel Braffitt, as well as a number of religious heads who offered the prayers. The vigil, which took place in Long Bay, St. Philip, also saw relatives, friends, and community members paying tribute through song. In other news, first it was the United States Embassy, now the Canadian Foreign Affairs Department in Ottawa, is warning Canadians traveling to Barbados to be on their guard. In an updated advisory, the Canadian authorities urged citizens to exercise care when driving. Citing police reports of perpetrators stealing valuables from cars in traffic, the advisory instructed the citizens to keep their car doors locked, windows up, and store personal belongings such as handbags out of sight. The government sets its sight on ensuring that there is a high level of nutritional awareness among residents. That's according to Health Minister John Boyce, who says measures are being put in place to address the labeling of food products on supermarket shelves. He made the comments as he addressed the Democratic Labour Party St. Michael West Branch meeting last night. Compulsory nutrition labeling, etc., for our foods in the supermarket. Uh, a lot of foods in the supermarket do have one nutrition label now because some of a lot of the ones are destined to the developed countries they have to have that label. But we, we have a responsibility between ourselves and the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Trade, for instance, to make sure Barbadians are aware of what these terms on the on the on the can uh, mean. Because you know some of them can be can be easily termed your Olympic study through playing a platinum because you don't you don't know what so we have to have a, 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 a code or a system which presents in a language uh, which Barbados can all that all walks of Barbados can, can read and understand clearly what are the contents of these foods that are offered on our shelves. Education Minister Ronald Jones raises concerns about the number of young men seeking higher education and John says he wants answers. He was speaking against the backdrop of some 29% of men appearing on the graduation list of the Barbados Institute of, for Management and Productivity for 2015. He told those attending the weekend ceremony that something must be done to address the situation. 71% of your students that are graduating in our study of are females. The gap, therefore, is a 42, I can't be correct, 42 percent gap between the males and the females. What has gone wrong? <laughs> With our young men, that only 29 percent, and it is not better than the rest of the rest is about 35 percent. 35 percent. What are the men doing? Not all. Remember, man is a very big name. 
I'm just asking questions because we have to reach our men as well. Recently nominated Barbados Labour Party candidate for Christchurch West Central, Adrian Ford, expresses concerns about a number of issues facing residents. Following a two-hour mass canvas of the Gall Hill area yesterday with opposition leader Mia Motley, Ford revealed that residents were frustrated about what they say is a high incident of a defective electrical wiring in government housing units in Hillside Road. He says other issues constituents wanted addressed a high unemployment among the youth, coupled with the high cost of living and access to tertiary education. Barbados and Guyana renews their joint commission agreement for cooperation in trade services and training. This is the third such memorandum of understanding between the two CARICOM countries. Very important initiatives to not only build people-to-people -people relationships, but to foster mutual or mutually beneficial opportunities in several critical economic sectors. It will allow us to realize a, a, a mix of synergies um, which will certainly help our respective economies to grow. That was Minister of Foreign Affairs, Senator Maxine McLean. In sports, Sri Lanka defeated the West Indies by one wicket in the rain curtailed the first one day in Colombo yesterday to take the lead in the three-match series. Set a revised Duckworth Lewis target of 163 in 26 overs, the host survived anxious moments before winning with seven balls to spare at the Prima Dacia Stadium. The West Indies had scored 159 for eight from 26 overs after being sent in to bat. The start of the day-night match was delayed by an hour and 20 minutes due to the persistent rain. Further bad weather during the West Indies innings reduced the game to 26 overs aside. There's regional and international news after this short break. Secure your future, be financially strong. To pick up with news from the region, searchers believe they have found the wreckage of the cargo ship that went missing off the Bahamas during the passage of Hurricane Joaquin. The El Faro and its 33 crew members disappeared while sailing from Florida to Puerto Rico on October 1. One body was recovered from the debris which was spotted in the ocean days after the ship disappeared as the hurricane swept across the Bahamas. Now a U.S. Navy ship using sonar equipment says it has located a vessel at a depth of 15,000 feet believed to be that of the missing ship. On the international front, Turkey's ruling Justice and Development Party has won a critical preliminary election regaining the majority it lost in June. With almost all ballots counted, preliminary reports show the AKP had won 49.4% of the vote with the main opposition CHP on 25.4%. The Turkish Prime Minister-elect called the result, and I quote, a victory for our democracy and our people. In Ankara, supporters of the ruling party took to the streets claiming an unexpected victory. The leaders of the moderate Islamist party had gambled that by holding a snap election they could win and form a government on their own. They succeeded and celebrated boldly. The victory was won in the face of warnings that the government is increasingly authoritarian. The Turkish nation has sent a message to all the world, said this man. We're standing firm. The result, however, may sharpen social divisions. The election has strengthened President Erdogan's grip on power. When he voted earlier today, a small crowd cheered and chanted, This nation is with you.
His officials handed boxes of toy cars to the children of voters. His opponents accuse him of trampling on human rights and reducing press freedom. And that's our morning update, but there is more on our website at www.pobidustoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and of course, like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. There you can get all the latest news and sports. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good morning.